Hi everybody, this is Eric Trombley from the Engineering Teaching and Learning Team and this time we're going to be talking about Purpose Built Video. This is another video of course in the Remote Teaching 101 series. So in this video you're going to get a sense of what Purpose Built Video means and what the educational literature supports uh, as far as techniques, tips and tricks. So let's have a look. Okay, I'm going to start off the presentation by giving you basically my top five tips. And these are pulled right out of the educational literature and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute, but let's get right to the tips. First, use good equipment. So one of the main things that I see a lot is people using cheap microphones. Avoid using cheap microphones. Make sure you're in sort of the $100 range for a microphone or higher if you can, because these microphones really make a difference. Good quality sound makes good quality video. And here's another really winning combination here. It's taking your material that you used to do in a 50-minute lecture and thinking about chunking it into pieces. Okay, so maybe in a 50-minute lecture you're really teaching maybe three things. Well, this is your opportunity to chunk that material into three pieces, make three different videos, and then that'll drive towards keeping the videos short. The educational literature certainly is driving us towards an idea that ideally seven minutes, eight minutes, that's the sort of neighborhood you're looking for. Speak relatively quickly. Use a friendly, upbeat, and positive tone in your voice. Avoid the trap of speaking too slowly or speaking into your chest, for example. You're trying to keep people cognitively engaged, and the data is showing us that people that speak a little bit quicker are the ones that actually engage the students longer. And then the tried, tested, and true method of using hand annotation on a blackboard or a whiteboard extends perfectly into remote teaching settings. So if you're doing lots of math, for sure, then what you want to do is get yourself a situation where you've got a tablet and a stylus or perhaps a paper and a document camera set up and you're going to be doing a lot of hand annotation, talking out loud. This is still a very winning combination in remote teaching. And then consider humanizing the video. You'll see at the beginning of this video, I put my face at the beginning and I will also put my face at the back end. And what this helps is humanize it so that I'm just not a talking voice here. You actually perceive it's Eric Trombley in front of you doing a presentation. Okay, let's get to the evidence. So certainly I want to highlight the work of these two individuals. The research group led by Philip Gao at the UC San Diego about six years ago. Actually, Philip was over at University of Rochester at the time. He made a set of fantastic guidelines because what he did is a giant experiment where he analyzed 6.9 million video views in an educational context and then tried to map the themes. What are the things in a video that actually made people watch it? And those themes are fantastic. I'm going to link in the description to this video the actual research that you can read. It's very readable and I highly, highly recommend you do that. Secondly, I want to draw your attention to Richard Mayer. Now he's at UC Santa Barbara in the Department of uh, psychology and brain science and he is really a well-respected person in the literature and there is 12 principles of multimedia based learning that Richard Myers group has developed over the years and I find them so important that I'm gonna go through them with you right now but I'm not gonna present 12 slides they can actually be chunked so I'm gonna chunk them in groups here so in every chunk I'm gonna give you the title the first title of the chunk is called reducing extraneous processing and here are the principles and then, but this is really the important piece. I'm going to focus most of my attention up and down the description column. So for this first chunk, reducing extraneous processing, it makes kind of sense here. You just want to take away the things that are going to be an add-on to how students are cognitively engaging. So the first one is very obvious. Delete anything that's not germane to your presentation. On a slide, don't put too much things. Keep it focused. Highlight the essential material. So just like I'm doing with my pointer here, Take a moment to draw the student's eyes to the right place on the screen so that they can engage with your voice. Don't add on-screen captions to narrated graphics. So if you're going to have a photo of something and you're going to talk about a photo of something, don't write what you're going to say beside that. It turns out that that audio channel that they're listening to can't compete very well or competes too much, let's say, with the on-screen text. And if you are going to place words, place words near the graphics. Don't put a graphic way up here and the words way down here because it'll be difficult for them to make that connection. And synchronize the graphic with display. If you're going to talk about a photo, don't bring the photo on 30 seconds before you talk about it. Bring the photo on exactly at the same time that you talk about it. Okay, second major principle, which is manage essential processing. So break the presentation into parts, which is one of the important things, the segmentation idea chunking okay it's important 
expose students to key concepts with pre-reading. So every week I suggest you make a task list for students and in this task list you tell them in a sequence what to do. If you have a little bit of pre-reading that they can do, they can learn some of the jargon, they can learn some of the terminology and the vocabulary that's important for your class before they get to the video. And then where possible use narration rather than text. So my actual voice right now in this video is more powerful than if I just wrote out this script and asked you to read it. Last group of Myers principles is foster generative processing. So speak in a conversational style. You're used to doing a lot of presentations in conference settings where your style is a little bit more formal. Try to make that a little bit more conversational in a learning setting and you'll see that students will engage with the video longer. Avoid the trap of falling down a machine generated voice situation. Don't say to yourself, oh my voice is no good, I can't use my voice, I have to go ahead and get somebody else's voice. Don't hire Alexa or Siri to do your slides. Students will immediately disengage with that. And it's the same thing with, a, with the photos. Don't use a, an avatar, a cartoon character to be the narrator of the particular slides. Use yourself. Humans are much, much more engaging than cartoon characters. And then avoid static images of yourself. I think that in this case you want moving video of yourself and you certainly don't want an avatar as I mentioned in the principle right beforehand. So you want to avoid slides like this. Okay, If you want to talk about a transformer, you don't want your entire script to be on the slide talking about the transformer. This is absolutely a, something to avoid. It turns out that weaker students will actually try to read this and they'll compete with your voice and they'll find it very inefficient for them to listen to your voice and also to read this paragraph at the same time. And essentially they get less information out of this slide than a very strong student. It turns out a very strong student actually aborts the mission of reading this text keeps their eyes more likely on this image and listens more to your voice. So the stronger students actually get advantaged by a poorly designed slides and the weaker students get disadvantaged. It's certainly something we want to avoid. You're going to want to avoid this. Avoid putting on a slide where, you know what, if you want to do Leibniz rule, don't just lay it out on the slide and then talk about this, talk about this, talk about this, talk about this. Don't do it like that. Hand derive this by hand with a touch tablet computer or a document camera. It is much more effective and it will stick a lot better with students. Avoid this. There is just too much on this slide. When you're talking, students will be wondering, is the professor talking about this? Is she talking about that? Is this circuit diagram important? Look at all the sources are here, which is really great, but which sources for what? It's just confusing. There's too much on a slide. Keep the slides simplified. Avoid falling down this. Do not hire any comic characters to be putting in inside your slides. You'll see many vendors right now are approaching you with all kinds of free things that you can add. I would say avoid that pitfall. So there you have it. That's my quick, quick tips around uh, multimedia learning, purpose-built learning. And I strongly encourage you to continue the conversation around these things with the folks in your department that know a lot about purpose-built video. And of course, we have three educational media producers right here in the engineering teaching and learning team. I strongly encourage you to reach out to them and they would love to help you with your video design as well as your video editing after the fact. So check them out.